states. Um, you know, issuing an order, state of emergency, sends a different message than asking pe people um, to do something. So I think this um, really takes, um, takes the magnitude of this and says, this is important, folks. We need compliance. Have you actually heard from residential business owners about uh, the concerns about not socially distancing or wearing masks? We have heard from a number of um, folks this week. Um, residents, um, business owners, it, there's a lot of concern out there. Um, I personally um, experienced a great deal of discomfort when I went to um, a grocery store um, last Saturday. And I would say half the people there did not have masks on. Many of them who I would say were probably 70 years or older. I mean, they're our most vulner vulnerable um, citizens and that just was not a good look and didn't sit well with me. With, with that concern, why would the Friday why not put it into effect because we need to give people, in fairness now, we need to give businesses and others time to kind of adapt, but also um, our residents. You know, we, there are people who will say, well, not everybody can afford a face covering. We want to give folks enough time to figure it out. Sometimes you can wear a bandana. You can cut up a t-shirt. Um, the CDC has, um, <laughs> guidelines on how to do that. So this gives people time to prepare and Friday night is the big night when people go out as we saw last um, weekend at Glenwood South. This gives them time to prepare for um, what is expected. What is the plan uh, for education the people? What is the city plan for education the people? No? Mm -hmm. this continue this situation, what is the plan? No? Yes, so one thing we've asked the city to do is um, put out a, information, not only in English, but in Spanish, um, about this, why it's important. And, the, you know, the big message I want to send is you're not wearing a face mask for yourself. You're wearing it to protect others. And, you know, we keep saying we're all in this together. Well, we need to be in it together because, uh, you know, if you don't know you're asymptomatic, you don't know you have this and you're spreading it, this is the safeguard to ensure that doesn't happen. So you're going to see a lot more um, from our city staff, our communications team, talking about the importance of this. And as I said, in English and in Spanish, um, our Latino community has been particularly hard hit as has our African-American community. Um, we also are starting a campaign with Wake Med. Um, we are gonna be distributing 10,000 masks um, to um, residents in um, the 27610 zip code. And this is an initial first step, um, trying to, um, again, educate and ensure compliance. Since last Friday, did you, uh, have you spoken with any business owners on Glenwood Avenue? If so, which ones and how did the conversation go? Um, I have spoken with a number of them. Um, you know, some um, businesses have done a great job with um, social distancing and um, service, and Mojo's being the perfect example that I would hold up there. Um, others, um, not so much. Um, I have spoken with them. I've spoken with their attorney and basically told them all eyes will be on you tomorrow um, on Friday night. Don't let what happened happen again. We may have already answered that question, but if they if Friday night doesn't change the same thing or worse, you guys roll back and change the policy if they do it again? I'm going to not answer that right now because I'm hoping that they will comply, but there will be consequences if that doesn't happen. For the patrons who go to the restaurants, especially on Glenwood South, that are social distancing, etc., I guess there would be exceptions for the mask. Well, we expect the business owners to let their um, customers know that that's an expectation to wear masks. Um, we also are working with the Downtown Raleigh Alliance. They have an ambassadors program. Um, last Saturday night, the ambassadors went out to Glenwood South, reminded people, um, please social distance or wear a mask. We also had the business owners go out and tape the sidewalk so people weren't lined up 
on top of each other. They were six feet apart. Those are the types of things we're looking for them to do. Um, you know, taking reservations is also another good way to limit the number of people standing outside. Um, we've suggested all of these to them, and um, I, I think, you know, in fairness, they didn't know what was about to hit last Friday night. I don't think anybody did, and they weren't prepared. Um, I think this week they will be. Again, we are asking for voluntary compliance and we will provide education. So, you know, our police officers are not going to be citing um, people who are out there not wearing masks, but they are going to say, hey, wearing a mask can help protect other people. And that's the message we're, we're sending. You know, but hey, let's face it, the more people who wear this, the sooner they can come off. Uh, one question, you, you're talking about the, the agreement with what it made for distribution the, the face mask free. you have the, the point where or when it start this distribution? I'm sorry, I didn't understand uh, the question. Uh, you you uh, say the, with white mask, it may be yes. free more than 10,000 uh, masks. Where, where and when it start for this situation? So that that program is just getting underway. Um, we were just getting updated on, on the other day. It's a partnership between um, Wake Med, Wake County, and the city of Raleigh. And Wake Med had approached us with this idea. Um, they have seen a number of um, residents coming to them for treatment and that is a common zip code. Uh, I mean, that zip code is also close to Wake Med, but it's also where we're seeing our highest rates. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Durham has been requiring masks a while now, but the, uh, the Gold Triangle said they won't ask the bus drivers to enforce the wearing mask. Assumably, Raleigh bus drivers won't be asked to do the same thing. How does, how does it help the people who are most vulnerable getting those buses to say not to get to wear That's a really good question. Um, you know, because of the way the buses are set up right now, we ask that they wear it, but we are not going to turn someone down who it might be, be that vulnerable person who needs to get to work or needs to get somewhere. We, we can't and we haven't been turning them down. What's been happening is our bus drivers are, who are wearing masks are saying, hey, could you please wear a mask? Could you please make sure you have a face covering, even if it's just pulling up your shirt and making sure that your, your face is covered. So we, we're trying to be as sensitive as possible and at the same time um, ensure the safety of our bus drivers and the general public. But there is a sensitivity there. Okay. You've got two live interviews. One of them is going to start in about two minutes. Yeah. And yeah. then we can do some more from everybody else after that. Holden's going to do his right here, and then I'm going to check with Keely and get her. Right okay. Does that work? All right. I'm just going to grab this. Do you want water?